chance to win both of these shirts for free, all you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. And if you want to get more entries into this raffle, just click right here to get more info about the raffle. Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Danny with Swamp Stomp, and this is my 155 mile Rad Rover review. So after 155 miles, I've kind of figured out what I like and what I don't like about this bike. Initially, I was planning on using the front rack as like my gun holder. Um, I did build a gun rack to go on there, and to be honest, it was terrible. Um, I tried it in different positions, different um, angles to have the gun rack, but unfortunately, it just puts way too much stress on the steering wheel, and when you're trying to go through mud or any kind of tight trails, it tends to swing the steering wheel or handlebars one way or the other. <clears throat> and it makes it really tricky if you're going through mud, you'll slide and such. So I ended up opting to get that off of there. Um, I still have the rack. I'm in the limbo if I'm going to keep it or not. I'm really not all that sure. What I generally do is I'll put my rifle on my back. So I'll have a backpack on or I'll have the backpack strapped down to the front or rear rack. And then I'll wear my rifle on there. The back rack has been outstanding. This year we carried out two bucks on that back rack. It was Mark's uh, eight pointer. That was, I think it was like 135 pounds. And then we had Alex's 10 pointer. And that one was right around 176 pounds without being field dressed. So we out and really it made that trip so much nicer than having to drag those deers two miles out of the woods. Also, to get any kind of gear in and out of the woods, um, tree stands, climbers, or whatever the case may be, this bike has been an absolute game changer. <clears throat> I have a problem with sciatica, and if I walk, you know, a mile or so, it starts kicking in, and it, it really tears me up, so then I have to walk maybe 100 yards and then stop, and then as the day progresses, I'll have to stop even sooner. So that has been a huge benefit, having these bikes, for me, the battery has lasted a uh, really, actually a long time. Um, some of the shortest routes or the shortest trips that I've had with this bike has been maybe 10 miles through some really thick, nasty grass, um, through mud and such, and I'll be right down to one bar. Um, some of the further trips that I've had in the woods would have been about 16 miles um, over the weekend. So. And that's without charging it overnight and such. So the, the, the actual battery has been worked out really well. I've gone through some deep water, um, probably deeper than I should have, and it's held it up really well. Um, some puddles, you know, you think it's not that deep when you get, get going through it, you find out it's a foot deep or so. And uh, the bike took that like a champ. What we have found is that as you're going through the puddle, if you keep momentum and you, don't really slow down. Your the tires are wide enough where it pushes the water out of the way and it doesn't get onto the important components such as the motor or the controller. Now on this Rad Rover, you'll see that the, uh, the motor controller and speed controller is down on the bottom. So I've been thinking about moving that up a little bit higher, but I haven't found it to be necessary because I have this little mud flap that tends to keep the water directly off of it. Now, if I do stop in a puddle, there's not much I can do. Um, I was carrying Alex's dough out of uh, out of the woods one day. I went through this puddle and realized how deep it was and there was mud in the middle. So I went through and I got stuck and I actually fell over. Luckily I caught myself um, halfway to falling down. Um, the bike didn't lay down completely, but it was probably well over the uh, controller. I was, I was pretty paranoid that I just messed up the bike. Got it out of there, was able to dry it up and I was able to make the rest of the trip out. Haven't had a problem with it since. Um, as far as durability, this bike is, is tough. Um, we've gone through some pretty messed up trails, all rutted up, and it takes it like a champ. The Rat Rover is kind of heavy, um, so if you plan on taking it in and out of management areas on a roof rack, you can probably forget about that and you probably opt for like a basket rack type thing where you can put it on the back of your truck or the back of your vehicle through the on the hitch receiver. The tires so far have been really good. We haven't had to replace any of them. I do have a, a slit on one of mine, um, but it has been losing air. And um, I reached out to Rad Rover about it and they were really cool. They actually sent me a tire 
Um, so I've been keeping that tire with me anytime I go out um, in my truck or something just in case it eventually does start losing air. Rad Rover's warranty has been outstanding. Anytime you call them up, their customer service is bar none. Incredible. They've been excellent with their customer service. Anytime you need a part, they get it to you right away. If it's something that's warranty related um, or they can offer you to purchase it through their store. And even then, it seems like they ship it out almost immediately. I've had nothing but good experiences with Rad Rover's um, customer service. The paint on the bike has been doing really well. Uh, we put these bikes through a lot of torture and I have no chips on the paint. It's been, it's been doing just fine. I think it's very important that you keep up the maintenance on your bike. So anytime you go out and if you're doing like a weekend trip or even a week long trip or whatever the case may be, once you get back from that trip, if you went through any kind of water or um, something where you have mud and, and, and uh, grass all up in the, um, the spokes, make sure you clean that out because you'll see rust start building up on the chain and you really don't want that on your sprockets and stuff because as you ride the bike, those dust particles, they can get down into the bearings and you really just want to avoid those kind of um, hassles in the, in the woods. There's not a whole lot of maintenance to these things. Essentially, it's like any other bike, um, but we're just putting it through a lot more harsh conditions. So you want to make sure you hose out any dirt, mud, or um, grass and stuff that gets inside the sprockets. Uh, you want to make sure you lube your cables and lube your chain regularly. We tend to keep our batteries charged um, when we're not using the bike. So once I get home, I'll go ahead and wash it, make sure everything's clean, get it all lubed up, and then I'll go ahead and um, put the battery on the charger, let it top off, and leave it there. Now, if I'm not going to be using the bike for, let's say, a couple months, then I'll go ahead and take the battery to manufacture recommendations for storage, and I'll leave it there. So in conclusion, uh, the Red Rover is definitely a big tool in our arsenal of hunting equipment, and it's really given us access to areas that we probably um, either wouldn't bother getting far back to or areas that would are seem to be unfeasible for us to, to get out unless you're planning on doing an all-day hunt where you're going to get out there and pretty much camp out there. Um, we've covered over eight miles, miles one way on these bikes and uh, you know those are pretty tough hikes when you're carrying all your gear, food, um, backpacks, unless you're planning on staying out there. It's tough to do that for um, one round trip. Thanks again for watching another Swamp and Stomp video. So uh, if you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. Um, please make sure you subscribe by hitting this button over here and check out some of our other how-to and review videos right over here.